Hi everyone, I hope you're okay. I can't quite believe it, but it's it's week three already of our series looking at the church, loving church, thinking about what sort of community is it that God wants us to be as his people. And this week, Amber's gonna be looking at a community humbled. And we're gonna delve into uh, perhaps things that we that we have made become reliant on, that God's saying, actually, I want you to let go of that. that that's not such a healthy thing. Uh, and what does it mean for us to just return to that point of complete surrender uh, under him. So that's what we're going to be exploring this week. Before we jump into that though, I just also want to highlight another little video that she's sent out about um, our alternative to the light of the night this year. If you haven't yet picked it up, it came out some during the week, if you haven't picked it up, if you jump onto the church WhatsApp group, you'll be able to find it there. And it's about a three minute video that just outlines the way that we are going to look to be light and encouragement to the community around us. And I don't know about you, but that, that feels really timely. The, the last week or so, it feels like actually literally and metaphorically some, some dark clouds have been gathering. Um, and so being a community that, that punches through that, that punches some holes in the darkness, feels like actually that is what God is calling us to. And, and on that, that thought, I just a couple of things that we, we've talked about before, but I think probably worth reiterating about just looking after yourself and what it means to look after one another as well. So I think we said this early in lockdown, I would just encourage you to exercise real wisdom and care about how much you expose yourself to the, the endless cycle of news, which feels almost unremittingly gloomy at the moment. That's not about burying your head in the sand. It's just about recognising that we're not made, we're not wired to be constantly on the receiving end of that news cycle particularly when it is so sort of down in in tone so just yeah exercise just a little bit of care about how much you expose yourself to that and give yourself space to, to process and to pray and to acknowledge the feelings that it is stirring inside of you the second again is a really simple one but actually just that call to be a community who really goes out of its way to encourage one another and just sending, I mean, I think it's really easy for us to underestimate the power of just a timely word of encouragement to one another uh, with all the risk that our moods are going to be all over the place at the moment. Um, the word of encouragement can be such a powerful thing and, and I think it's easy for us to overlook that. So so, so let, let's do that. Um, I, I love that, the word encouragement, the biblical word encouragement, it comes, we get a, a Latin word from it that literally means heart. And encouragement, you could just think of as putting heart into someone, strengthening someone's heart. I love that, that thought. Um, because the reality is, you know, our faith leaks, our, our encouragement leaks, and, the, and it's easy for us to get discouraged. So let, let's go out of our way to encourage one another. Um, and to encourage people outside of the church because actually they they are not drawing on the ultimate source of encouragement uh, as we are. Um, so, so let's be a little signpost to that ultimate reality as well. Uh, with all that in mind, actually, I'm just going to read a bit from 1 Thessalonians where Paul's talking about his own personal ministry and, and he talks about it almost as a ministry of encouragement. So let's just begin our service with that and then we'll, we'll pray. This is from chapter 2, verse... 11. He says, For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, we pray that you would minister your encouragement um, and your challenge to us this, this morning through the words that Amber's going to share with us. But we pray as we go into this week as well that we, you would help us to be people who are encouragers, that we lift the spirits, that we strengthen the hearts of those around us. We ask it in your name. Amen. See him there, the great I am, a crown of thorns. On his head, the Father's heart displayed for us. Oh God, 
We thank you for the cross Lift it up On Calvary's hill We curse your name And even still You bore our shame And paid the cost Oh God We thank you for the cross Behold the Lamb The story of redemption Written on his hands Jesus you will reign forevermore The victory is yours We sing Hallelujah to your holy name Jesus you reign forevermore The victory is yours Offer up this sacrifice For every sin our Savior died the Lord of life can't be contained. Our God has risen from the grave. Yes, our God has risen from the grave. Oh, behold the Lamb, the story of redemption.
mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God In all my life you have been faithful my life you have been so so good every breath that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice and you have led me through the fire in darkest night Close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived In the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so So good breath that I am made, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause your goodness is running after, it's running after me. And your goodness is running after, it's running after me. My life laid down, I surrender now I give you everything Cause your goodness is running off It's running off to me God, you're so good God, you're so good today's craft you need a coat hanger it can be one per family so that you um all the kids and young people can work on it if they want to and um, i have also got for this activity 
I have collected some things that I have. So some of the things that I need for today it might be a ribbon, it might be some string, that could be garden string or string that you generally use in the house. Um, it might be some fun things like that. It could be tin foil that I cut out into strips. It could be an old napkin, not an old, not a used napkin, just a spare napkin um, that I cut into strips. It could be a plastic bag and um, all sorts of things. It could even have some beads if I wanted to. And what I need to do this is some um, sellotape and some glue as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach them all to this coat hanger so there'll be lovely long streams of all sorts of ribbon and tinfoil coming off of the coat hanger so i'm going to do that now And then once you've finished, you'll have something that might look a bit like this. So your task now is to go and get your sellotape and your glue, your whatever you might need, all the different bits that you can find in your house, so ribbon and um, plastic bags, tin foil, old napkins, a uh, kitchen roll, whatever you can find to hang on your coat hanger. Then at the end of when I finish speaking, I would explain why I've asked you to make a coat hanger with all of these tassels on. So off you go. You've got until I finish talking to finish your one. If you want to show us, send a picture of your coat hanger onto the WhatsApp group because the rest of the church would love to see them. Enjoy. There are two readings today, one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament. I'll read them one after the other. So the first one is from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, starting at verse 12. The Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain or command locusts to devour the land or send a plague among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. The second reading is from Revelation chapter 3, starting at verse 14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So, because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, I am rich, I've acquired wealth and do not need a thing. But you do not realise that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, so that you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let's just pray before we begin. Lord God, uh, we just come to you with open hearts and open minds um, to listen to what you have to say to us today. Amen. 
Um, now, before this job, I was a, a primary school teacher um, and occasionally at lunch and break time, you would have some children might come to the classroom door and just say, do you have any jobs for us to do? Um, sharpening pencils, tidying book corner, all that sort of stuff. These children are usually um, the most polite and well-behaved children. Um, and occasionally, if I did say, yes, you can come in and they were getting on with their jobs, I might have to pop out into the corridor and do a few jobs myself. Um, and when I'd come back into the classroom, uh, they would automatically change their behaviour. No matter how kind of well behaved they were being, they would still change because I'd suddenly come back into the room. Um, they would go a little bit quieter and they'd tidy up a bit like more quickly. Um, I mean, it sound like a really controlling teacher. I wasn't. Um, but it was basically because they knew that when... Um, when they were there, it was a privilege for them. And ultimately I had the decision. And um, so when I walked through the door, they wanted to make sure that they had every right to be there and they wanted to prove themselves to me. They humbled themselves because they knew that I had the authority and I had the final word. Um, and let's be honest, if I didn't have the higher authority, it would be unsafe for them. Um, it would be harmful for the children if the teacher wasn't in control. Um, so for their sake, I had to have the higher authority. In the two Chronicles passage that was read, God told King Solomon that the people needed to humble themselves. They needed to recognise um, who had authority and who was God. They needed to humble themselves, pray and turn back to him so that God could hear, forgive and heal their land. Um, just a month before lockdown, my boyfriend and I went to one of the days of the Christian conference called Nat Supernatural. Um, and that evening after... Um, the session they actually called up any parents of those who had walked away from faith or who had never connected with God before um, and what followed was probably 100 people and um, different ages a lot of them kind of my parents age were walking up to the front some single people some in, the, some in couples um, and a lot of them just crying instantly crying as I looked at the crowd my heart broke once again I broke for all those parents and their kids. I looked at each, indi each individual parent and I thought of the Sunday mornings they'd had to make an effort to get their kids to church, of the late night prayers said beside the bed, of the countless prayers prayed over them. My heart broke for the churches who had spent time and energy investing in those kids and praying for them. And still, those kids didn't know and hadn't connected with God. How can... How I don't understand how people can be in a community in our churches and still not know God. What's going on in that? I've known it before and I've known it again, but something has to change in our churches. Too many of my friends have walked away from church and from faith and from God. Too many 20s and 30s something, my sort of age, don't see the relevance of God in their lives. And I mean, I am a crier. <laughs> Most people will know that. But when I saw those parents walk up to the front instantly, I cried. All I could think of, um, all I could think is if the church doesn't change, then more parents will be walking up to that front in 10 and 20 years time and I cried. I don't want to let our kids and our young people go through the motion of church for 18 years and walk out the other side not knowing God, not being connected with him, not knowing how much he loves them and he is for them. But I'm grateful that I cried and I cried and in my tears, I sat there and I asked God for change. When we go to God for surrender and renewal, he gives us an opportunity for him to change us. Just like God was saying to King Solomon, if they humble themselves, if they pray, if they seek me and they turn to me, I will hear, hear them and I will forgive them and I will heal their land. As a church, we have to be a community humbled. We have to surrender to God and we have to ask for renewal. Otherwise, people won't know God's goodness in their lives unless we do that. So how can we be a community humbled? We humble ourselves individually. There's that quote um, that sometimes is said, uh, individual renewal leads to corporate change. It starts with us. Now, feels like I'm changing the topic slightly, but... 
I'm a big tea drinker, like in both sense of the word. Um, I love drinking lots of tea and um, I love having big cups of tea. I'm just going to show you a few of mine. Uh, the Faint family always taking the mickey out of me and my mugs. I mean, there are more mugs in there than I could fit in my house probably. Um, this is kind of the size of the mugs as well. Do a face comparison there. <laughs> They're huge. I love tea. I love lots of it and I love big quantities of it. But the thing is, when I go to people's house, and some of you are going to be thinking, have I ever offered her tea before? Uh, when I go to people's house and they offer me tea, I always feel a little bit nervous. Um, it's a bit of a risk for me. I like my tea strong with a little bit of milk. If you heard that, take note. No, I'm joking. Um, and I, I think it reminds me a bit of when I used to go to my nana's and she would make tea and it m more likely resembled like murky water uh, rather than actual tea. So I kind of stopped saying yes to tea at her house. Um, and when I spent a year in South Africa, um, I decided that I just had to start drinking coffee after a couple of months because, um, I mean, they do coffee well, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, but I just couldn't face going to somebody's house and them offering me tea. And in my head, all I could think was, well, well is it rooibos tea? Are you going to put sugar in it? Is it long life milk? I just can't deal with it. <laughs> uh, so coffee it was that year. Um, and as much as I love and adore tea, I'd rather not have it if it was going to be anything less than my standard of tea. Uh, I just don't want to compromise. I want good tea or I want no tea. For me, there is no compromise. Can you see where I'm going with this? Um, are you ready for the analogy? God wants you to be the best cup of tea. He would rather not have you as a cup of tea if you are going to be a mediocre tea. That's what he means in this passage of being Luke. Well, he wasn't specifically talking about tea. But uh, that's what he means in this passage of being lukewarm in your faith. Either be hot or cold, there is no middle ground. There is no, I'll do this for God, but not that. God would rather you not be a follower than a mediocre one. Individually, we have to realise that God should have ultimate authority. We have to humble ourselves individually and exalt him in order for our faith not to become lukewarm. It's a continual surrender and a continual humbling and recognising who God is. When I went to volunteer in South Africa, as I mentioned, I thought I was going to support them when, as cheesy as this sounds, actually they were so much richer than me, not in finances, but in faith. They were full of faith in God that I hadn't ever experienced in a group of people before. They had a realisation that we can't even imagine of how evil this world can be how unjust this world can be but they knew God deeper and more tangibly than I had known him up until that point that year changed my faith because I saw people who were individually humbled they knew God's authority and his power and his love if they didn't have God they didn't have much else their faith was on fire how easy is it for us in West Wickham to be lukewarm in our faith the church that this letter from Revelation was written to is similar, it was, a sim was a similar church to ours. They were a wealthy city with thriving banks and they were comfortable. So comfortable that uh, it says they didn't realise they were actually spiritually impoverished. They were spiritually poor. They were wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. This year though, even in West Wickham, it hasn't been that comfortable Think back to before March 2020, when life was a little bit more comfortable. We were going around doing our bits, ticking our to-do list, planning ahead, strategizing, thinking, dreaming. Imagine that we are inside the church, doing our things, singing, talking, praying, brainstorming, planning, connecting, and the whole time, Jesus is standing at the door of our church and knocking on the door. Would we hear him in our busyness? Would we hear him in our doing and talking and planning? Jesus owns the church. He doesn't have to knock at the door, but he wants us to hear him. He wants us to open our beautiful wooden door that we have in our church and welcome him in. He wants us to recognise it is his church. He wants, to, he wants to sit with us. He wants to dwell amongst us. This year has forced us to stop. It's forced us to stop singing, stop planning, stop brainstorming, 
brainstorm, brainstorming. There's been so much unknown, but I wonder how much more it has encouraged us to stop, to humble ourselves, to recognise that by our own strength, we cannot change and transform lives. This helping to transform lives um, can only happen through the power of the Holy Spirit in our everyday lives, in our settling and in, in our integrating that Dan talked about last week. We need to welcome Jesus into our church. We are individuals, we need to humble ourselves and ask the Holy Spirit to be the wind in ourselves. So how are we going to be give, using the t- how are we going to use the time that has been given to us at the moment? Are we going to wait for whatever it was like before March 2020 and um, before to go back to how it was? Because I don't want to go back to the way things were before and I've had conversations with some of you and I know that some of you don't want to go back to the way that things were before. I don't want, want us to try and um, carry on the kingdom stuff without the king. I don't want to see our parents walking up the front, parents in our church walking up the front for prayer in 20 years time because our kids and our young people never connected and never knew God for themselves. I don't want another generation of people to not know the goodness and the power and the love of God. I don't know what I want it to be like, but that's okay. Because in our humbling and in our surrender, God is renewing us for how he wants us the church to be let's use this time for god's glory let's be a community humbled a community coming together coming together to god in surrender a community wanting renewal kids have you finished your coat hangers yet i bet they look amazing if you have send a picture onto the whatsapp group what you can do is you can hang your coat hangers into uh, up in your garden on a tree like this can you see how the wind's blowing through it and like that (laughs) i was thinking it wasn't going to move then (laughs) how the wind's blowing through it and it's so easily molded by the wind around it now i've been talking to the adults about being humbled about surrendering ourselves to god and i want us all to be encouraged to be so easily moved and shaped by God's spirit that we are like these coat hangers and as soon as God's spirit works through us we um we are humbled and we are renewed we surrender to him in the message version of the bible passage that was read earlier on in revelations verse 22 says are your ears awake listen listen to the wind words the spirit blowing through the churches be the coat hanger in the wind so easily molded and moved by the power of god so we are a community of what we are a community of jesus followers a community of exiles and a community that has been called to be humble being drawn near to god for surrender and renewal let's humble ourselves and let's ask the holy spirit to be the wind in our sails are your ears awake listen listen to the wind words the spirit blowing through the churches loving father as we pray together now I just do thank you for our church family, for our local church here at St John's and for the wider church, for churches around us and around the world. Just thank you for all that you do through them. Thank you that many people have been given hope for the message that they're sharing, the practical help that they're giving. And we just pray that you know we will increasingly be able to serve you But we are sorry for the times when we do lose our first love of you. And perhaps we act, we make decisions, and we just just lose our first love, the love that actually helps us to serve you in, in the way that you want us to. So we just ask you to help us to do that better and be more close to you day by day. We pray for those who are part of our wider church family. I just ask for your blessing on T 
him, David, as he continues to improve from his operation, and ask you to bless him and give him full recovery from that. We pray for Jonas, who lives in Mali, with his um, Simeon and Gemma's son, and their missionaries there, and he has had a broken jaw and a very deep cut and lost teeth. So poor little lad, he's obviously had a nasty accident, so we just ask that you'll bless him and, and the family as they look after him, and that you'll give him good healing too. And we pray for the Jago family as they move back to Japan. We thank you for the, all they've been able to do remotely with keeping in touch with people over there, and for what they're going to be doing when they get back there. But we ask now for them to have, you know, your help as they make all the practical arrangements they need to do packing up their home and getting them all, the whole family over there, finding a new home, getting the children settled in schools and all those sort of things that we ask for your peace and your care for them as they do that. And we just thank you for them as a family and ask your blessing in every aspect of their lives. Um, please bless the family of that policeman who was killed in Croydon and just comfort and, and bring your peace to them and to his colleagues as well, especially Andrew Munns, who's Sally's son, who works in that police station. Um, just give them your comfort and your peace, we pray. And we just pray for our efforts to make our church even more inclusive as the years go by, so that all really feel welcome with us and we just can make whatever necessary efforts we need to make to not only make things easier for people to come but also to be able to enjoy their ministry to us as well whatever their difficulties are so we just ask for that as we proceed with this this new phase of what we're doing and building on what we've already done in the past and please help those who are really struggling now with this new phase of the pandemic, worried about the dark evenings coming, worried about further infections, especially those perhaps who have avoided up to now, but now are facing loneliness and isolation with, and you know, in, in hard, hard situations in um, families and on being on their own. So we just do, do pray that we'll be able to bring comfort and hope wherever we possibly can and that the help will be available for those who perhaps worry about their future jobs and so many different aspects to this. And we do ask that all of us will behave responsibly. And I just ask that the students and school children will be able to enjoy getting into their courses and really enjoy life at uni, but be able to have that wisdom to act well. And finally, we just pray for the government as they make decisions and weigh up the evidence and we just ask that they really do have your wisdom on all this. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
Just as we sign off, can I ask you to keep praying for the Alpha course, which started last week? It felt like the first session went well, but I would love you to keep praying for just, I guess, the mood and the the atmosphere um, of the course. Um, Sometimes over Zoom, some of the constraints that come with that can make that that thing quite hard to work at. So we we just want to create as as much as a permission-giving environment as possible where people feel that they can just ask any question that they want and they they, they don't feel too self-conscious about that. So if you could keep praying into that and and also obviously that Jesus will be drawing people to himself as people engage in that Alpha course. Let me just read as like a final word of blessing really from Thessalonians. Paul says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So as you go into this week, I pray that you may know that joy, that joy bubbling up inside of you despite what is going on around you. And that you're able to express gratitude to you, your maker and your father. So God bless one and all. Take care and let's encourage one another. Thank you.